Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and you'll notice I've actually got fewer parts on the table and that is because today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Cooler Master TD500 Max. Now this is the first ATX case the Cooler Master have included in their Max series and being in their Max series the case comes with an included AIO and power supply. So if you are a new builder this should simplify the process you're not going to have to pick as many parts. Cooler Master have done part of the job for you and as well they've already pre-assembled the AIO the power supply and the cable management so it should make the building process a little bit easier as well. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the case. So you can see we've got this etched material in the temper glass panel setting this out as a TD500. To remove the temper glass panel it can simply be popped out from the back and then lift it up and away. And to remove our other side of panel we've got two captive thumb screws at the back we need to loosen and then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. Take a look at our top I.O. We've got two USB Type-A ports, a power button, a combined headphone and microphone jack. We've got a button to cycle through the RGB effects in the case's built-in controller and a single Type-C port. On the top of the case we've got a magnetically attached dust filter which can simply be lifted away. So on the top of the case it is possible to mount up to three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans or up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. I'm not planning on installing anything at the top, but to get better access into the build it is possible to remove our top panel. It's held on with two screws at the front, and then with the screws removed we're simply going to be able to tilt the top panel up and remove it. So in terms of other fan and radiator mounting options, at the rear of the case we've got a 120mm RGB fan pre-installed. While at the front of the case we've got a custom version of Cooler Master's Atmos 360mm AIO. If we remove the front panel, there's a few improvements to the version of the I.O. the Cooler Master have done for this case. So this is their top of the line Mobius fans, which should give us improved performance both in terms of cooling and noise. And Cooler Master have used a thick 38mm radiator compared to the standard 27mm radiator. If we just free up our pump block, you can see we've got extra long tubes in our I.O. and they're rooted down towards the bottom of the case. So this whole combination of a really thick radiator, good fans, the set to intake, should give us really good CPU temperatures. So one other thing you'll notice that all of our case cables are pre-routed to where they should plug directly into the motherboard so you're not going to have to go searching at the back for them. And in terms of our power supply we've got two 8-pin EPS connectors here, a 24-pin cable and we've also got a single 8-pin PCIe cable as well as a 12-volt high power cable coming through. So in terms of powering our motherboard and our graphics card all the connectors are going to be on the front. So how this is going to work, in the case accessory bag you get these short cables and all you're going to simply do is plug the cables into the connectors and then plug the connectors into your motherboard. So you're not actually going to have to go searching at the back of the case for your power supply cables. So in terms of powering your graphics card, if you go over to NVIDIA's new cards, you've got a 12 volt high power cable here and it does have a nice right angle connector on so you shouldn't have any problems with that. Where you might run into trouble if you've got an AMD card that does have more than one 8 pin PCIe cable. You've only got one 8 pin connector here and Cooler Master do only include one 8 pin PCIe cable here. So your graphics card needs more than this you're not going to be able to use this case out of the box. If you do find yourself in this boat, you can contact Cooler Master. They will send you an additional PCIe cable that you can plug directly into your power supply. So you'll have one PCIe cable coming from your power supply and one plugged into here. Not ideal, but it is a solution that will allow you to use this case if you want to. So in terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to ATX in size. You can see at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 380 millimeters. So the only set of shame scene is where is our graphics card going to be getting its cool fresh air from? We've got this vented panel here, but our power supply is installed directly below it. So really the only place that our graphics card can get air from is the air coming directly through our radiator, which is going to be slightly heated up by cooling our CPU. So while I'm expecting CPU temperatures to be absolutely brilliant, our graphics card temperatures I'm not expecting to be great because of where our I.O. is installed. If you're looking for your screws for the build, they're hidden behind this panel, so we just need to push this panel backwards and out to remove it. And you can see here in this little foam pad, we've got all the screws we're going to need for our build. So we've got the little standoffs for installing our two and a half inch drives, and then we've got all these screws for installing our motherboard. Moving into the rear of the case, I think the first thing you're going to notice is all our power supply and case cables are pre-rooted and managed for you, which should save you an absolute load of time. You'll notice that all our power supply cables plug into connectors on the case. So really at the front, all you're doing is plugging these extensions into the other end of the connectors, and that is how this whole system works. 
In terms of the power supply, the Cooler Master are using this as a pretty high-end model. It's an 850 watt, fully modular, ATX 3.0 gold power supply. Do you also notice the Cooler Master have plugged in the fans on our I.O. and our rear case fan into this combined PWM fan and ARGB hub? We've got our reset button connected to the top, so when we press that button on the front of the case, we're going to be able to cycle through the ARGB effects. And we've also got a spare ARGB header at the top, and this is to plug the ARGB cable on our pump into it and be able to control everything through this hub. So coming from the hub, we've got two cables to plug into our motherboard. We've got a 4-pin PWM cable and a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable. There's also a SATA cable coming to power the hub, but it's already pre-rooted and plugged into our power supply. So there is two things I'm not particularly happy with with all our fans going into a single hub. One major and one minor. The minor one is that we're not going to have separate control of the fans in our I.O. and also our rear exhaust fan. Not a complete deal breaker and for convenience this does make sense. Where this is a problem is that the fan that Cooler Master have used at the rear has a three pin connector on it here. You can see there is one spare pin that's not plugged into the header here whereas the fans in the I.O. are 4-pin PWM connectors. This is going to cause issues if you try to run this in PWM mode, because this rear exhaust fan is going to run at 100%. There is two solutions. One is that you run in DC mode and use voltage control for all the fans. The issue with that is your fans in your I.O. are going to have a much higher idle speed without increased noise. The other solution, which is the one I'm going to go for, is just remove the rear exhaust fan and plug it directly into the motherboard. That way we can run our rear exhaust fan in DC mode and leave these fans in the I.O. running in PWM mode. In terms of drive mounting, you're able to mount two 2.5 inch drives behind the motherboard tray. First thing you're going to want to do is push the little rubber pads from the accessory bag into these holes. Then you're going to want to screw these little standoffs into the back of your SSD and then you can simply line the SSD up with the rubber pads and push into place and that's going to hold your SSDs in place. There is also a hard drive cage down at the bottom of the case, although at the moment all our spare power supply cables have been pushed into it, so we'll just pull these out. And then to remove the hard drive cage, we've got this thumb screw at the bottom to loosen, and then we're going to be able to pull the hard drive cage to us to remove it. So we take a look at our hard drive cage. On the top of the hard drive cage, you're going to be able to mount a two and a half inch drive. The little rubber pads are going to go into here and push on just like you did on the rest of the case. While in the hard drive cage itself, you're going to be able to fit up to two three and a half inch drives. To install your three and a half inch drive, you're just going to put these clips onto each side. And then you're going to be able to slide the drive into the hard drive cage. And you're able to put another one down below it. So the only additional thing we're going to need to do before we start building is install the brackets on our I.O. to allow it just to fix it to the motherboard. I'm going to be showing you using an AMD motherboard. If you're going with an Intel motherboard, just install the Intel brackets and the process is exactly the same. So all we're going to do is take our AMD bracket, drop it down into place. Then we've got our bracket screws to slot into place. And then we can screw them into place. And then same thing on the other side. To open the socket cover, we're going to need to push this lever down and out to bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard, and then we can open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket. Once we're happy it's sitting correctly, we can close the socket cover down again, and then as we close this lever, the black bit of plastic will pop off, and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. We're going to install an M.2 SSD in the top slot, so we'll remove the heatsink. If we're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the heatsink, as well as this heat pad below the SSD that you're going to need to remove. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the slot, flatten it down, and then we'll close this clip to secure it in place. And then we can return our heat sink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'm going to open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with the slot. And once we're happy, it's all lined up, it's just some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. We need to install the brackets for our CPU cooler, and the first thing to do is remove these dock clips. Then you're going to want to take the bag labelled AMD screw, and in this you've got four standoffs, and it's the thicker end of the standoffs that you're going to screw into the motherboard. If you're using an Intel motherboard, the first thing you're going to need to do is install your backplate, and if you're using an LGA 1200, you're going to want to push these standoffs in towards the middle. For LGA 1700, you're going to want to have them pulled to the outer setting, and it's just a simple matter of slotting it through your motherboard. Then, depending on your motherboard, you're going to use either the bag of screws labelled LGA 1200 or LGA 1700 and screw one onto each corner. 
We can then insert the motherboard into the case, line it up the standoffs at the back. And you'll notice once it goes over the middle standoff, it's going to help hold the motherboard in place. And we can then secure the motherboard into place using nine of the screws from the front of the case. Next, we just need to get all our case and power supply cables plugged in. So starting off at the bottom left hand side into this header, we've got our HD audio cable and we're going to plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. Next to that, we've got a system fan header. So we'll bring our three pin connector coming from our rear fan through and get it plugged in. We've then got two 3-pin 5-volt ARGB headers, so we'll bring the ARGB cable coming from our fan hub through and get it plugged in. If you'd rather use the button on the front of the case to control the ARGB effects, just leave the ARGB cable unplugged. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header here. Make sure you plug them into the same pins as I'm showing you in the video now. Then we've got our USB 3.0 cable into this header here, and the header just above it is for our front panel Type-C cable. Then we've got our 24 pin extension cable to plug in. So we're going to plug it into the motherboard and then we can route the cable over and plug it into the case. And then we'll just tidy up the cables using the included cable comb. We've got three fan headers on the top of the motherboard. The one to the left hand side is our CPU fan header. So we'll plug the PWM cable coming from our fan hub into it. And then we've got our EPS cable. So we'll plug the ends labeled CPU into our motherboard. And then we're going to be able to route the cables around and plug them into the case. Next, we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. And then we can slot our I.O. into place. We just need to put a thumb screw onto each corner. And then we just need to tighten each of the thumb screws up in turn. Our pump header is the fan header towards the top right of the motherboard. So we can get our cable plugged in. And then we'll just tuck the excess cable through to the back. And I'm going to pass our ARGB cable through to the back where we can plug it into the spare ARGB connector on the hub. We're now ready to install our graphics card. We're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot cover from the top. We can then line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure. And the graphics card is going to clip into place. And we can secure into place with the two screws we've just removed. And then we just need to plug our 12 volt type power cable into the graphics card. Then all we need to do is replace our panels. And you can see at the back, we have no additional cable management to do. Okay, so that's the build complete, and it definitely was one of the fastest and easiest PCs I've ever built. If you don't know how to set the PC up, I've made another video that covers all of that, and you'll find links to that video in the description. So let's take a look at the temperatures. So our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D idled at 39 degrees and reached a maximum of 67 degrees during a 10 minute out of 64 stability test. Our Strix RTX 4080 idled at 33 degrees and reached a maximum of 70 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, these were exceptional with average noise levels of 33 decibels at idle and 39 decibels under load. So I think to put those temperatures into context, it is worth comparing with another PC where I used exactly the same motherboard, CPU and GPU combination, and that is the NZXT H7 Flow 2024 edition. So in that build, the CPU was also being cooled by a 360 millimeter IO, but it wasn't the top set to exhaust. And I think this comparison is going to highlight two important features. The difference in mounting your IO at the front set to intake on both your CPU and GPU temperatures, and as well, just how good a job Cooler Master have done with this IO. So in the TD500 Max, our CPU idled 9 degrees cooler, and it was 10 degrees cooler under load. It was the opposite story with our GPU temperatures. These were 5 degrees hotter at idle and 7 degrees hotter under load in the TD500 Max. It also highlights just how good the noise levels were in the TD500 Max, being 8 decibels quieter both at idle and under load. So I think it is good just to know what this case can do. So if you do have a difficult to kill CPU, this case should do an absolutely brilliant job at doing it. Although that does come at the expense of your GPU temperatures. 
And I imagine if you did have something like a 14900K in here where loads of heat was being dumped into your GPU, your GPU temperatures would be even worse than what I've recorded here. So I think it is important just balancing up your hardware um, and deciding whether this is going to be the right case for you or not. So in terms of building the case, this was really one of the quickest and easiest builds that I have done. If you were a first time builder, this would be much easier than doing a standard build. Could our master have thought things out well, everything's laid out nicely for you. And at the end of the build, I didn't have to actually do any additional cable management, which was great. There is a few things that I didn't like about the case and a few things that I do think Cooler Master should improve upon for future versions. First of all, some people aren't going to like having the I.O. at the front. It is going to give you the best CPU temperatures, but it is adversely going to affect your GPU temperatures. I can 100% see why Cooler Master have done it. At the front, it's out of the way. Everything is pre-managed and it's not going to cause you any additional problems with the rest of the build. Had you had that radiator at the top, you wouldn't be able to have it as thick and it would get in the way of plugging other cables into your motherboard. So for a max case with everything pre-managed, there really is the front is really going to be the only place you can put your radiator. In terms of the two-stage system for connecting all your power supply cables up, I did really like this. It really simplified the installation process. There is, however, some negatives to it. You do have a little bit more cable in the main body of the case and it doesn't look quite as neat and tidy as if you were able to pull those cables further through to the back. So you are sacrificing something on aesthetics for convenience. So as I mentioned during the build process, I think in terms of the graphics card, the major issue you're going to have if you're going with a graphics card that is standard 8-pin PCIe connectors, really if you have more than one of those connectors on your graphics card, this is not going to be a great case for you. The reason for that is it only comes with the one 8-pin connector on the case and one extension cable. So there's no way that you're actually going to be able to connect this up and use your graphics card in this case out of the box. Cooler Master will send you an additional PCIe cable if you contact them. And I imagine the future versions of this case that ship will include that additional cable. Two other things that I did find disappointing with this case is the fact that we've got separate cables for our front panel connectors. And as well, the mechanism for securing the right side panel wasn't great. And I did find it quite difficult to get this back on again even though the cables have been appropriately managed. So putting everything together, there really was just a few wee tweaks Killer Master needed to do with this case to make it absolutely brilliant, but there definitely is many more positives with this case compared to negatives. And I had a really straightforward time of putting this build together in it, and I've got a lovely, cool and quiet and great looking PC at the end of it. So I do think if you were a first time builder, this would be a really easy case to build in and you'd be really happy with the PC you put together in the end of it. Um, if you are somebody who prefers a little bit more customization about where your AIO goes, the type of power cables that come in, and particularly if you are somebody using a graphics card with more than two standard 8-pin PCIe cables, this may not be the case for you. So hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.